Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. This time I have the new Honda HRV Sport. So as always, I will walk you around the car, talk you through the specification and also give you my initial impressions. Now, some of you may remember that I actually drove this car last year, albeit briefly. This time I've had the car for a week, so I've been able to live with it and to test it more thoroughly. The Sport is the range topping version of the HRV and it has a starting price of £28,090. Now, that isn't the cheapest car in the world, especially when you consider you don't get features such as keyless entry, you don't get a panoramic sunroof, and you don't even get smartphone connectivity, which is quite annoying for, well, for someone like me. I, I quite like my technology and my connectivity. So Honda, yeah, that is a little bit tight. Come on, give us, you know, give us Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, please. Now, I will talk about the kit in due course, but I want to start with the styling because I think this is a good looking car. This particular version is finished in a platinum gray metallic. It is an optional color, but I think it looks fantastic, especially when it is complemented by the gloss black detailing you get as standard for the Sport. So you have gloss black detailing for the front splitter. Sorry, some motorbikes are going past. Quite a few motorbikes are going past. There we go. Um, you also get uh, a bit of gloss black detailing here, which makes the car look like it's got mascara. But to be honest, I don't dislike that. It's just more, you know, it's not an insight. It's more of, uh, of an observation. The gloss black detailing, in fact, runs its way all around the car and, of course, to the rear. Also at the rear, you have not one, but two exhaust pipes. So this car, yes, it definitely looks the part, if you ask me. Also as standard, you get 18-inch alloy wheels, which are finished in a satin, uh, a satin black, and they look fantastic. And if you look at the side profile, you'll see it's got a coupe, uh, a coupe vibe to the styling. I like that. The, there is a bit of a drawback for that though. Sorry, the wind noise is uh, just picked up, so that may affect the audio. There is a bit of a drawback, and that is the um, rear headroom is a little bit limited, but I will come into that in a little bit. Uh, as standard, you also get privacy glass, and you also get gloss black door mirrors as well. The HRV did receive a facelift last year, although the facelift was quite conservative. However, one major highlight from the facelift was the inclusion of a new engine. So this car has got the 1.5 litre VTEC turbo engine. And let me tell you this, it is punchy. So let me lift up the bonnet and I can, I can talk you through the engine in more detail. So here it is, the 1.5 litre VTEC turbo. It offers 182 horsepower, along with 240 newton meters of torque. If you prefer that in pound feet, that is 177. This engine feeds its power to the front wheels. I'm afraid there's no option of a four wheel drive version, but there is the choice of gearboxes. So you, you can either have a six speed manual, which is what I have in this car, or if you must have an automatic, you can have a CVT, although I would strongly urge you to stick with the manual. The reason for that is because, well, it is better in my opinion uh, it is cheaper and you get uh, better fuel economy and less co2 emissions and of course you get a bit more torque as well i think if you go for the cbt the torque figure drops down to i believe it is 220 newton meters uh, in regard to performance whether you go for the manual or the cbt and uh, no matter which one you go for this car will hit 62 miles per hour in a respectable 7.8 seconds with a top speed of 134 miles per hour. So this is a punchy car, and to be honest, it's not too far behind a hot hatchback. Now, in regard to fuel economy, that which I touched upon a few moments ago, on a combined run, Honda states this engine with the manual gearbox is good for 42, well, up to 42.2 mpg on a combined run, with CO2 emissions of 151. If you go for the CVT, it does drop down a little bit, so you're looking at um, fuel economy of around 39 mpg on a combined run with 163 grams per kilometer of CO2 being emitted. Um, but both of which, you know, both engines have got uh, a, a first year VED rate of 210 pounds. Now, if you do want more economy, there is the choice of a 1.6 litre diesel. 
On a combined run, that offers 56.5 mpg and the CO2 emissions fall down rather significantly to 105 grams per kilometre. This means for the first year of VED, you will be required to pay £170. So that's the engine covered. So then, let me take you inside the car. I think the interior styling is going to be divisive. I quite like it, although I think some people will hate it. I think this is going to be quite Marmite. Now, as standard for the Sport, you get um, seats which are finished in black fabric, as well as this kind of bur uh, burgundy plum leather. Like I say, so it's a lovely vintage car going past me. Look at that. That's glorious. I think it's like a, uh, an old uh, Ford Model T or something. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Um, yes, back to the interior. Yeah, so uh, finished in fab uh, fabric and leather. Uh, like I said, it's kind of a burgundy uh, finish. I like it, actually. Uh, I think some of you may think I'm mad, but I think it looks all right. You also get similar colour stitching on the steering wheel. And, yeah, I think it is quite a nice interior. Now, don't get me wrong, certain parts of the inside do feel rather dated. These buttons, for example, they feel a little bit last decade. This indicator stalk, it just feels a bit cheap and nasty. I know you can't really see it because the lighting isn't very good. Let me actually step inside the car. You do get sporty pedals though, which I am a fan of. So let me step inside. The touchscreen is covered in, in dust. Just give it a wipe. Let me turn on the ignition, which I would do if I could find the key. That's uh, my left pocket. Uh, what's it doing in there? Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, um, this doesn't have keyless entry, so it is a an old school turnkey ignition. In regard to um, features, as standard, you get a seven inch touchscreen, which has DAB radio, Bluetooth, as you can see there. It has navigation, but it doesn't have smartphone connectivity. Common Honda, sort it out. So if you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, tough luck, you can't have it, which is quite annoying because I'm a big fan of Android Auto um, and it means you can bypass this rubbish system. Sorry, Honda, um, it is pretty woeful. Now, regular viewers uh, of the channel will know exactly how I feel about the touchscreen, so I won't bang on about it too much, but yeah, um, I would probably say this is you know, one of the worst in the business. I'm sorry, Honda, but I do need to be honest. Um, you also get a reversing camera, as you can see there. And when you pop the car into reverse, the wing mirror adjusts itself automatically, which is a very handy feature, especially um, bearing in mind you won't want to scuff those lovely alloys. You also get front and rear parking sensors, uh, dual zone climate control, heated front seats, uh, as well as a few safety features such as uh, autonomous emergency braking, um, uh, lane departure warning, six airbags, and you also get the you know, the, gen, uh, the general things like traction control and you know, that kind of jazz. Um, but yes, uh, automatic headlights. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, as standard, this car's got um, LED headlights and LED rear lights. Right, let's speak about practicality. The door bins aren't massive, but you can fit a uh, smaller bottle in them. So in fact, let me get my bottle which for some reason I've left over there so as you can see I can pop it in like so let me move the hand sanitizer you can't be too careful you can't be too careful so I don't think you'd be able to get a larger bottle in there but I, but to be fair you can probably get could you get another bottle like this in there no probably too too short um, but yeah I can fit the bottle in there got a bit of space left over got my hand sanitizer stay safe people uh, in the middle, you've got a very nifty cup holder. So let me just push this button here. Well, hey, look at that. It's like something out of James Bond. It's quite a handy feature. Fold that back like so. You've got more storage here. Apologies, the light isn't that good. Uh, you do have this black roof lining, which does make it a little bit dingy in here. So more storage there. You've got storage underneath the centre armrest, which is adjustable as well. So if I pop it down, it can be slid forwards or backwards depending on your comfort needs. You've got a little crevice down here. I like that crevice. 
not a word I, I use very often. Um, but you pop your smartphone here if you want. You've also got um, two USB ports, a HDMI port, which I've never needed in a car, but you get that in some Japanese cars, uh, quite odd. And on the end there, you have a 12 volt socket. There's no sunglasses holder, which I do find a little bit disappointing, but hey, um, it's not the end of the world. And of course you do get a glove box, which offers a decent amount of space. So yeah, no complaints there. Uh, certain parts of the interior do feel dated, I won't lie, but hopefully when uh, a brand new HRV comes along, that will change things. Getting a good driving position is easy. The steering wheel, as you would expect, adjusts for rake and reach like so. Oh, that sounds, that sounds a bit cheap, doesn't it? Um, sadly, there's no electronic um, function for the, for the driver's seat, but it's quite easy to get uh, a comfortable setup anyway, and these seats are pretty comfortable. Let me move on to the rear now. Now, because this car has got a, a more coupe-like styling, the rear door handles are actually disguised in the C-pillar. So from a distance, it almost looks like a three-door, almost. As always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, so I am, of course, a taller chap. So let me see how I get on in regard to rear space. Let me pull up my jeans because uh, they're falling down a little bit. Right, let me step in like so and close the door. So as you can hopefully see, because it is a little bit dark back here, look at that. That is loads of room. That is pretty impressive. Actually, I say pretty impressive. That is very impressive. Look at that, I can really stretch out and I've got loads of space to play with. So uh, if you do happen to be a taller person, fear not, you will have plenty of space back here. Well, actually I say that, headroom because of the uh, coupe styling is a little bit limited. Now I've got, it's difficult to say I've got dark hair and you've got dark roof lining, but I've got about maybe an inch or so spare. So if you're a taller person than me, you may find headroom to be a little bit uh, tricky in the rear. Now, I think you'd struggle to fit three adults back here. Uh, I think it'd be too much of a squeeze. So really, I'd say this is a uh, two plus two, or if you have uh, children, you know, three children back here, shouldn't be too much of an issue. But yeah, I'm properly impressed by the space back here. Um, I, did, I didn't think it'd be quite this generous. Now let's move on to practicality. So of course you get map pockets in the back of the front seats. Door bins, which aren't massive, but you can fit a bottle in there. You've also got a cup holder down here, and you also have a 12 volt socket. So those in the, in the rear can charge their smartphone or their tablet on the move. Very handy indeed, well done Honda. You do get a center armrest, but sadly it doesn't have any cup holders. But if you want to have a bit of extra comfort for those longer journeys, you've got that to use. And that is pretty much it for the rear. You do have a hook if you want to hang something up. And yeah, that's, that's your lot really, but yeah, pretty practical and also pretty spacious. So let me talk you through the boot. Now this may be the range topping version, but you don't get any fancy electronic wizardry. You have to do it by hand and it's all manual. But hey, it's not, it's not exactly a hardship. Uh, so as always, I've got all my filming bits in here, but we'll cut to a clip where the boot is empty. This boot offers 448 litres, which I'm sure you'll agree is pretty generous. Um, but if you want more space, you can, of course, fold down the 60-40 rear seats to give you uh, 1,473 litres. So that is pretty good. You've also got a 12 volt socket in there as well which may come in handy. And better still, as standard, this car has got the magic rear seat. So if I take you back into the rear and pull this lever, you will see the seats fold dead flat. So if you want to transport things like, I don't know, a chest of drawers or something quite big and bulky, then you have the extra practicality and versatility of rear seats that fold pretty much completely flat. So um, yeah, Honda have done their homework there. So well done guys. Just actually pop it back like so. Uh, what else haven't I spoken about? So I've spoken about the practicality in the front, practicality in the rear, spoken about the boot, the engine. I think that's pretty much everything covered. 
Here we have it, the new Honda HRV Sport. There will of course be a review coming, so be sure to look out for that. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. I will answer them as quickly as I can and to the best of my ability. But I think that is, that is really time for me to finish. So I do hope you have enjoyed this video or you, fa you found it useful. Uh, if so, be sure to like, subscribe and to ring my bell so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.